Hello everyone and welcome to Academic Coordinates. Today we are joined by Mr. Deboho who will tell us more about himself and his journey as a student. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm Debo. Um, um, okay, I'm Debo. Um, my name is Mpatel and I'm from Limpopo in a place uh, called Lubwakomuko Mpatel. And um, currently uh, finishing up my studies in Stellenbosch University and I'm um, uh, finishing BSc in Agronomy and Entomology. So that's what I'm doing this side. So then, um, what can you tell us about where you're from and how you grew up? Well, um, I'm more from, as mentioned, I'm from Ampatel. And um, so, where from is kind of uh, you know that little bit of high school rural area kind of and so it's more or less village and also close to, to township kind of thing so um, my childhood was quite uh, you know simple and straightforward I was an uh, indoor person never played on the streets that much often and uh, I grew up with almost being nurtured by my granny and uh, she had a farm, uh, you know, was in, in, the village, in those villages, the elite family had their land somewhere and they used it for planting and so forth. So we had that also at the yard, it's quite a big yard and half of the yard was being used for gardening and so forth. That's where uh, my passion for plants uh, uh, started uh, in. So more of, my, more of my concern when I was doing that is, you know, you know the crop just die out of the blue. And I was concerned, like, no, you know, there must be something that can be used on this crop, that the crop can be, you know, beautiful and be healthy. And that's where most of my agricultural studying are developed. So, yeah, that's how I grew up. And yeah, look at me now. <laughs> so take us to your time as kind of a high school student. Mm. What did you imagine yourself doing once you left high school? You know, when you get to, to high school, you know, when someone asks you, you know, in grade 8, someone asks you, like, what are you going to be in life? You know, think about, hey, I want to be a pilot, I want to be a doctor, you know, all those big things. But then the reality is that at the end of the day, you have to choose something. And uh, so was my idea in high school was like, oh, one day I want to become a doctor, why not? But then the biggest problem ever is that I'm afraid of blood and how am I going to deal with that? So then with uh, the passion from plants, like, you know, how, becoming, how about becoming a doctor for plants? How becoming a, maybe a researcher and just being more like a scientist towards the, the plants? And then that's why I thought about that. So in my high school, I'm more or less the shy person. I was the most shy person ever. And um, I had friends of mine who were also quiet or also focused on their study. And then early in the mornings, we were going to come to school, sorry, come to school around six in the mornings, about pray in the morning after that, go to class, study in high school. After, 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 after school, you know, people leave and around two o'clock, we sit down, we continue studying until six o'clock in the evening, then you go home. And uh, that was almost my life in high school. And uh, from grade eight to nine, I was in a certain school. From grade 10, I moved to, to, to a new school. And then from then, uh, I, started, I took a uh, uh, stream of life sciences, um, and cultural sciences, physics, and mathematical sciences, you know, math math mathematics, and then, um, yeah, so that is the stream that I took in the high school. And our well, principal one day gave us a talk, like, oh, you know, there's a high school bus that you can apply for, studying art and all those things. And, you know, I made it, you know, we have a talk with my friends, like, oh, you wanna apply for this? Are you gonna apply? Because knowing that, you know, we all know ourselves at the end of the day, you know what kind of capacity I'm reaching, what kind of capacity I cannot reach. So I know that it's good in, some, in certain things, we're doing some, some module, same subjects. So I, I feel like if you're applying, I'm not applying. And so like, no, he's focusing on something else, not this. And therefore, it's like, you know what, apply for it. And then I did apply, and other people applied. And this is us in grade 11, uh, I think around April, that's when I was issued, um, awarded the, the scholarship. And that really placed my perspective into studying agricultural sciences when I get to university and that's almost my summary, huge summary in high school. Other than that, it's all about books in, me, in, uh, in high school. So never been a street person and uh, dancing
playing na so uh, playing outside na only force when you're doing uh lo you know all, all those activities that's what only one of us outside but the rest indoor also uh, that's always behind my books and what co-curricular activities were you involved in in high school um uh, well um not much you know you know always on on, on studying and stuff so one of the most uh co-curricular activities that i forced myself to be part of was debate a team and just increase my english uh vocabulary and knowing the whole things and gaining confidence to speak in front of people also continue speaking english in most uh in front of people in different people and stuff so i joined debate uh team and uh yeah i was quite speaking fast and nervous and they taught me right just to you know take your time when you speak i was only way sometimes you know when you speak someone don't hear and don't understand what i'm saying but i'm speaking something so they nurtured me very well and uh, that was uh most of uh extra activity that i did in high school and also most that i I've, I've said I've done way too much. It was assembly, ministering the assembly Monday and Friday, Fridays, and that was the most like uh, something that my heart was at in high school. And also improved my public speaking, and just to not be afraid to speak in front of people and so forth. That actually molded me to 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 be the person I am today as well. Wow! And then, what can you tell us about um, your transition? between high school and university well uh the transition it was huge uh you come from that uh you know rural area high school uh in class you know if you're quite a number of you guys and you know we never seen encounter or sit in class with uh, different colored people and uh you know you speak your own language class so the transition from uh high school to university was quite broad it was a quite a big gap for me to adjust fast and quick it was hectic i don't lie but luckily enough i put myself to extra limit to uh to adjust i came to university with my spiritual father and stuff so uh so we came way too early before anyone was allowed to come to university. So and as we were walking around campus, it was like we never it's we don't see where are the black people in this university. You know, those guys like, are we in a they are not a country where there's no people, or just like, you know, and atmosphere, the weather is just different, you know, in Stellenbosch, winter rain, Western Cape is winter rain, you're from Limpopo, it's uh, summer rain, and just kind of change, just a mess, and uh, and most adjustments that I had to make deal with was most in academics, and, uh, you know, I remember the first time I sit in front of a computer in computer schools, it was more of intense, because you're sitting next to people never met before, different languages, and you're not that good when you seem to, when coming to your computer literacy, so so, you know when they correct me it's like no don't do this do that i feel like oh my word i still have a long way and uh, the transition i have to do is i have to put more extra hours after hours to to to, to catch up to be in the same page with everyone a lot of people know how to use so many things than uh, than myself so i have to push myself to know how to use those things and how to do all those things how to apply all those knowledge and so i have days not sleeping time to figure that out so that i can just be on the same page with the lecture and be on the same page with every student in class so that was the most uh the, the biggest transition i had to make but hard work and dedication towards that made it more easier and better so can you explain your course to us just in simple terms in simple terms okay <laughs> you know every time i tell someone like yeah, i'm studying agronomy and entomology it's like what is that you know it's it's, it's yeah so what i'm studying uh apparently is just studying of um crop breeding so in simple time i would say crop production just how to uh, we are studying how to produce crops mainly like vegetables uh cucumbers uh, lettuce uh, all those you can name them all those vegetables in your in your fridge we, we study how to plant them so we study how to plant in different environments on soil on medium we plant them with the water we plant them inside the wood shops we plant them inside so we plan them, we study how to, how to plant them in different mediums, study how to plant them in greenhouse, we study how to plant them in hydroponics, we study how to plant them in open areas. So we study, I study that. And also in terminologies, that's a study of insects. How does insects uh, affect the uh, biosphere? How does insects uh, interact with plants and affect plants? How does insects 
actually affect our lives and uh, know all about all groups of insects and understand them especially in South Africa understand all groups of insects in South Africa what can be about affecting economy so uh, just a lot of things to, to deal with insects that's what I'm focusing on and studying at the moment and uh, also includes electives of studying how diseases uh, disease affecting plants you know all disease affecting plants and how to manage them and do research on diseases and how to control them studying of soil as well nematology those small worms inside the soil uh, we studied those uh, kind of things and yeah those so in, in similar with that what I'm doing uh, so someone can say like actually you know, you're, you're studying farming but not necessarily study farming because when you're saying study farming it's not as like just you know it's a common way but actually there's so much going to farming so farming is divided into many things you can farm uh, you can farm at the grape grape vines you can farm uh, fruits can farm so it's all up divided in many ways so what i'm studying what, what i'm doing is not necessarily saying farming only but how to farm and certain things i can say that is similar with how to farm certain things and how to manage your farming you know certain thing so that's what actually i'm doing so in your own words what is the difference between agricultural science agricultural economics and forestry so okay um Agricultural sciences is like the the main umbrella of every agricultural course. So it's come above, and then underneath it, you have forestry, you have agricultural economics, you have uh, plant and soil sciences, and you have viticultures, you have uh, um, you have veterinary, animal sciences. So agriculture uh, is a uh, more or less a cover weight for every course included in, in agriculture. So it's all okay. Because I'm studying in some ways like I'm studying agricultural sciences. But what, else, what is special are you doing within agricultural sciences? That's why we divide into different component uh, components of agriculture. So so mainly uh, forestry is almost about uh, studying of um, uh, terrestrial environments and uh, trees, more like those wood making trees. That's why most forest is focus on, focusing on. So how to manage them, planting them, and uh, how to, when to know when we can cut on the trees, which is to cut, how how they you know calculate how do you produce woods and all those things. So that's where forest goes. That's in my own ways, but there are more of information going into details. Do your research, find more information. But in that in summary, in my own understanding, what forest is and agriculture economics more about understanding the ag agricultural dynamics of economics of it and uh, understanding the economic flow in, ag in, in agriculture how does things cost stuff uh, just in basics in summary just like how does like money flows within agriculture so that's why uh, this focus on agricultural economics understanding the realm of economics within agriculture and then we have again plant and soil sciences is a program and in that program we have agronomy, we have entomology, we have plant pathology, we have nematology and soil sciences. So those it is a is a is under plant and soil science program. So it's divided into co those components. So agronomy as I explained is, is a study of crop production, plant pathology is a study of disease affecting plants and soil sciences is a study of uh, soil dynamics and understanding the soil components, chemist, soil chemistry and how does plant get nutrients from the soil, understanding all those things. So we go in details and then we have about something like applied plant physiology where you understand the physiology of a plant, like someone study physiology of a human body, understand how the human body function, we understand how the plant body function. So those are the things that you are studying. So so that's uh, the agriculture in summary. So there, there's more that goes into that. So we have about animal sciences. So in Stalemosh is animal sciences that's about uh, studying of an animal in Pretoria, in USA, Pretoria is of uh, veterinary, they call it veterinary, uh, study veterinary. So it's all, it's all more, almost not similar or not the same thing, but more, almost go in the same way, uh, in the same direction. So if you want to understand the difference between that, do your research. I'm sure uh, internet will give you more context. But I advise you to, to visit Department of Agricultural Sciences and Department of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry. In summer, in it, uh, the abbreviation is DAF. So go to that department, look for uh, bazaaries and stuff, and then the program that they offer. And so it contains a lot of information coming to courses that are included in agric sciences. Wow. And then going into the fourth industrial revolution, mm. um, how would you, how do you think um, your field will be automated and 
do you think that there would then be space for uh, human beings to be in the field? Well, that's the most question I've been asked a lot. Whenever I speak about the agriculture, of course, like how will fourth industrial revolution affect agriculture? So, agriculture is a very big field. It's very complex, and um, so far, fourth industrial revolution in agriculture is already established. It's already riding in agriculture. So, it's more as um, you know, there, there are more machinery ever imagined in agriculture already running. For example, some of them they are developed already. And the most concerning one that I would say that is taking over from human uh, uh, from human races, uh, as well as of uh, artificial farming, where you put uh, hydroponics, when you, uh, we, we use you know, water to produce plants, not using soil as a medium, but we produce crops in within the water. And uh, it's divided, divided into many contexts. So that's I think department that is almost people because that you can can be automated. You can set it up for a week and not even attend to it and it still function normally and uh, so it's more that like less you, you uh, less people are going to in that department to work but then they still need researchers they still need people to get updated to information they still need agronomists to to understand the nutrient components what other crop require as much of nutrients is needed into that other products so that uh, is taking over, but luckily, agriculture is so divided into things, and there are some crops that cannot be changed from from the natural way of farming to artificial or to be to develop fourth industrial revolution. That they need, they still this, there are some crops that still need to be farmed in a similar way. That's where most like I I, I think that it only uh, fourth industrial level only affects a certain part of agriculture, but doesn't affect others. So, but then you know we. As, as, as you grow, tomorrow someone may establish a certain uh, a machine that does better work than a human being and that's where we are going. A lot of uh, machine plant, uh, planters, a development of plant, uh, planting machines already established, so don't need a human to dig up the, the, the plant, the, 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 the soil. Uh, there are planters that can do that for you. You know, we don't need a human hand now to, to, to plow again. There are different machines that do that, so it's more or less like more machinery are developing are getting developed into agriculture and that's affecting job availabilities in most industries and uh, you know it's all about someone say open a farm for me a certain thing and that will open to how many people are gonna hire and then if there are more machines that are gonna do the work then only gonna hire people who are able to function who are, who are able to control those machines and make and make, the, make sure that the machines work properly and that will be few people getting the job so that uh, is uh, those kind of uh, things affecting job availabilities and agriculture but luckily enough it's so complex and then there are a lot of machines available in agriculture as people are still getting hired in that uh, in, in this world. And then what went into your decision to choose Stellenbosch as the university to go to? Well, um, you know, I was I would say that in first I would say that is the most Stellenbosch is most of the fastest uh, universities to respond to people. <laughs> so I applied to different uh, I think I applied to Rose University, uh, Stellenbosch, and uh, University of Pretoria, and those two they took time to reply. And Stellenbosch was so quick and so fast to give you this. So it was like okay, uh, Stellenbosch I think is the way to go because even the program that they have they are broad, and then they are even uh, the, the stats of it they are quite good. And I did my research in each of, of those universities, and I decided you know what since Stellenbosch says uh, everything is in order, why don't I focus on getting there? And then rather than focus on many things, and uh, uh, so just for security, yes, I did apply, but I didn't finish those applications because there was long responses. Wait for about two a week or two, there's no response for that. And uh, so much within a day, uh, even the same day, you send an inquiry, you are got responded to. And it's like, no, let me put an effort. And since what I'm want to do, especially, is in that university, and the stats of them uh, being good at that is is, is is quite high. Why don't I focus and get into so? And that actually uh, made myself okay. Let me focus on one thing at a time. And that was Stellenbosch, and I focused on getting in. And all my my attention was studying was okay. This is where I want to go, and I must put an effort into getting there. And at the end of the day, I end up here. And then, apart from Stellenbosch, um, which other universities would you recommend for people who want to go into your field? Um, quite quite a number of universities and colleges that are offering agriculture. And uh, for example, it all depends on what kind of a quality of 
the, the whatever field you whatever type of major you wanna do. For example, like U uh, UL University of Limpopo offered agric uh, offered agricultural sciences, and one of the things fields that are quite good at is agronomy as well. Uh, most people I've had few people doing masters in agronomy in, in the University of Limpopo, and they're quite excelling as well, and they are quite happy with the with the, the, the programs and what they get in the side. And the fourth hand university, Yervolts University, uh, college agricultural colleges, uh, they are quite good as well. UP as well. And uh, those are universities that actually are good and at, 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 at agriculture. So it's all about what you want to do and how do you want to do it. And uh, so choose university. But mostly I recommend that you do your research first for each university. Send in cards, ask questions, ask for brochures to read and ask prospect uh, prospectors to, for you to go through so that you can uh, understand the contents of what they are offering and how, how to scale between you, one university to another. And yeah. So just make sure that you, you, you understand what you want to do and which university is the best for you to do it. And then do your research and then apply for that university. And how did your typical day look like or your typical week look like during your time as a student? Hmm. Okay, there are quite a number of things. Uh, you know, most of the time we try to you know, follow normal schedule and you know, the timetable offered. So we, you know, timetable of us uh, in the morning is this, afternoon is this. But most of the time, you know, we attend and, uh, you know, one, one thing that I, I advise students, don't ever miss class. The moment you miss class, you're already behind. 70% of you missing class, you're already behind 70% with whatever that uh, subject or module is. So uh, we have to make sure that I attend every class. And uh, after that, after classes, I have to sit down, deal with what was dealt on that day. Make sure that it, after I dealt with that, I'm at least one chapter ahead of my lecture. So my daily routine will be so busy with books. And uh, when I come into extra uh, curricular activities, and I make sure that my academic should be in order and before I can go there. So that's the most of the primary things. And that will cause you to work so hard. Always going to be busy with books, be busy with every, every, whatever that you're doing. But most importantly, um, it's all about the, uh, the focus and the time you're giving to, to your studies. So always be, always be busy. That goes from Monday to even to Sunday. So when you come from church, you don't realize that this is Sunday, you just want to relax. When you come from church, it's study. Yeah. yeah and then what was your coping mechanism uh, you know different people have different coping mechanisms yeah. <laughs> for me i think it differs from one day to another depending on what how am i feeling on that day how to cope on that day but most importantly the the coping mechanism that i can give just have to remind yourself where you're coming from where, uh, where you're coming from and why why are you are you there and also where are you where do you want to see yourself so those are the best motivation the way that I most of the question that I ask myself each and every time so that I can keep my head down and keep working. And uh, most important mechanism that I have what, what that, that I, I do have that to cope with studies is to you know make uh, make friends with people who are studying the same course, create groups that uh, you know you discuss contents that one day maybe you don't understand something. You know, a, a human mind is a uh, it's capable of certain things or to a certain level and uh, to a certain level you may not understand and understand some things what i understand is not what you understand so i may have different understanding you may have different understandings and when we share the knowledge we we, we lighten one another greatly so that's one of the most best best uh, coping mechanism that i use so uh, be around people, uh, uh, make an uh, association with people the same course that you're studying so that you can share knowledge, can share like information, remind us about what is true, remind us of how, 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 am I, how am I on the right track with this so that you keep your spirit motivated in every day. Another, the, 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 last, the last but not the least, is most important that I keep myself going. It's all, it's all about prayer, you know. It may, uh, you know, the body can be tired, but if your spirit is motivated and filled, you are able to, to have hope and to fight for another day. And so that's why those are the things that um, uh, keep us focused. Mm -hmm. So yeah, prayer is not only a coping mechanism, you know, <laughs> but it's what keep us uh, 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 hopeful and keep us strong each and every day. And what co-curricular activities were you involved in during your time as a student? Oh boy. <laughs> so I'm quite involved in a number of things. I think uh, what I was doing second year, uh, to third year, I was a chairperson of uh, China Student Fellowship. That I was uh, one of the 
particular activity that I was doing. And now that the years goes, I end up being part of Satis Council Executive uh, as a registrar, and then um, just you know, dealing with correspondence, uh, management of societies on the Stellenbosch campus, and then end up uh, taking that third. Even this year, I'm still responsible for that, and also this year, I end up being a house uh, student leader. And that usually help in uh, you know keeping order, uh, communication within the students and management of the building and stuff like that. Just make sure that every student is uh, so it's alright. So that's what the extra curricular activities that I'm currently busy with at the moment. And yeah. Well, and then what advice would you give to someone who would like to study your course? Um, first, you know, it's all about make sure what this course if you want to do this course make sure that is 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 the one that you want to do because each and every course has, has its own ups and downs and if you're not ready to 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 keep your downs up you will have a big trouble so uh i advise that be a person who love to read theory there's a lot of theory going to it be a person who love who, who's curious uh there's less information that can be communicated you need to be too, uh, so 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 too curious to go extra much do your research and find out more be a person who loves to inquire. And this kind of uh, course I'm doing uh, require is required to ask questions. You know, we learn best when you ask questions. So I think those are the few things that I think you should must as a person. Also, the most important one: love research. Uh, there's a lot of research that does go into what I'm studying. Love research, and you'll be fine. Yeah, for our last question, mm -hmm. um, what advice would you like to give to the youth of South Africa and abroad? Um, for To answer that question, I'll start by quoting the words of uh, Minister Blake that, you know, don't take a course that is, uh, you know, that is out of demand in the country. Uh, take a course that is more of, um, you know, you know that you're going to use this course to change your society. You can use this course to, to, to change my, my, my uh, our people, can use this course to change our, our, our country. So our thinking must not be limited to I want to study something and get a job. Our thinking must be that, okay, what, what can I do to impact people and my society with what I'm studying? And so I think if you channel our thinking towards that uh, that way, we will be will be helpful uh, and will go extra mile. So let's not think about what we need now. Let's think about about our next generation. What is that we can do better to better their their way of living, to better their way of how to see, how, how, uh, how to see things. And I think if we think that way, our next generation will be so uh, so 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 amazing. And uh, even our, our 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 country, our our society will be a better place. So I just challenge everyone to think in that kind of dynamics. Thank you so much um, for agreeing to this interview. Thank you for telling us about what you studied, and really appreciate it. No, I really appreciate you guys thinking about me, and <laughs> um, um, I'm just looking forward uh, for sharing information, inspiring the young minds that are coming along and uh, people just to be themselves and study what they enjoy and be what they want to be in life and yeah thank you so much thank you